Hello. Uh, thank you for coming to my presentation. I'm very happy to be able to, in Euro Python, to talk in EuroPython. My talk title is Automate the Boring Stuff with Slackbot, version 2. Today, I will talk about background and motivation for Slackbot and how to create simple bot, how, how to create interactive bot, and how to extend the bot using Python libraries and APIs. And I'd be happy to take pictures and share them and give you feedback on Twitter. Hashtag is EuroPython2022. And I've already published this slide on slides.takanori.net, my, my slide site. And I've already shared slide URL on Twitter. It, the slide has a lot of code, so you can see codes on the slide. Okay. Why version two in the title? The story goes, goes back to 2019. I have given talks about Slackbot at several Python conferences. Uh, talks in Philippines, um, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, I forgot this. <laughs> France, Japan, or some country. And three years later, in this year, I've updated the talk with the latest information about Slack and libraries. And this is my first talk at an international Python event after COVID-19. I'm very happy to be able to present in person in front of you all. Thank you. And huge thanks to all the EuroPython staff and the volunteers. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Uh, by the way, before the main topic, uh, I will introduce myself. Uh, I'm Takanori Suzuki. My Twitter is Takanori. Please follow me. And other information already said from Iqbal-san. Okay. And I'm from Japan. PyCon GP 2022 will be held as an in-person event. Uh, URL is 2022pycon.jp and the date of middle of October. And the venue is Tokyo, Japan. Please come to Japan and see you at PyCon GP. See you. <laughs> OK, let's get back to the main topic. First, I will talk about the background and the motivation of this talk. Uh, I heard PyCon JP events several years in the past. As you can imagine, there are lots of tasks to hold a conference. For example, talk arrangement and ticket selling, venue management, and food, coffee, snack, and beer. Beer is important for me. The number of PyCon JP staff is over 40. Half of them are new staff every year. New staff ask similar things to me because I'm a chairperson of, the, of PyCon JP. And I send similar answers repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly every year. But programmer is lazy. As you know, programmers dislike routine work. I also dislike it very much. I'd like someone to do be my secretary and do tedious tasks for me. Let's make it, because I'm a programmer. Let's create uh, my secretary. The goal of this talk you learn how to create simple bot and how to create interactive bot and how to extend the bot using libraries and APIs through various case studies. Uh, my secretary is a chatbot of Slack. 
Is there someone using Slack? A half or more? Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm launching the Slack application at any time on my PC and smartphone. Anytime. So it's easy to access to access for me. I'd like to do everything in Slack. Let's make a chatbot. At the end of this talk, you will be able to create bots like this. For example, uh, for example, it's a greeting and randomly choose randomly and count of years and more and more. Now let's learn how to create a bot. First, I will explain simple integration with incoming webhooks. This is system overview of incoming webhooks. When a program sends a message, hello from Python, to a webhook URL, then the message will be sent to Slack. This is uh, system overview. And create incoming webhooks integration. How to generate a webhook URL is as follows. Step one, create a Slack application. Step two, activate incoming webhooks. Step three, add webhook to workspace, to your workspace. Uh, create a Slack application and set, set the name and set the application icon and activate incoming webhooks and add webhook to your workspace and choose channel. At last, we got webhook URL. Then let's send a message to Slack with, the, with this URL. Post a message via webhook URL. We send a simple message with car. When we send a message with JSON, uh, hello Slack. The message will be displayed in Slack. Uh, the JSON sent to webhook URL, okay? But we are Pythonista. We use URL dot request module. Make dict and JSON encode JSON encode and send. At last, uh, send a message, hello from Python. If you like requests, it is easier to use requests. And I also recommend uh, the Python Slack SDK provided by Slack. PP is all Slack and SDK and create webhook client, then send make text message. It's easy to use, okay? And uh, this can be formatted as Markdown, uh, bold, or link, or emoji, or something. If you want, but if you want to create a more complex message, use Blockit. Do you know Blockit? Blockit is a new UI framework for Slack applications. This is a sample of Blockit. Uh, make type section and set text and fill some fields and will be displayed this complex message. This is block it. And if you create, if you want to create block it, you use, you can use block it builder. Block it builder, block it builder is useful for creating block it. We can write block it code interactively and see the results visually. Okay. Uh, Summary of incoming webhooks. Easy to post message from programs and create complex message with block it. But simple, uh, but incoming webhooks is one way only. Program to webhook to Slack. I'd like to interact with the bot. Next, I will explain how to make an interactive bot. Wait a moment. Oh, sorry. Okay. Are? Okay. 
I will explain an interactive mode. Uh, SLOC provides two protocols for interacting. One is a uh, events API over HTTP and socket mode. In events API over HTTP, uh, user message will be sent events API and events API directory over HTTP. The protocol requires static public HTTP endpoint. I send hi and send to static endpoint and the program will send message. On the other hand, socket mode does not require static public HTTP endpoint. Socket mode allows you to receive events API through a private web socket. I send hi and send events API uh, tunnel with web socket. In this talk, I choose socket mode because it is easy to develop locally. Okay, create bot user. Uh, I describe how to create an interactive bot. At first, we create, we create bot user on Slack. And five steps. Create a Slack application, enable socket mode, subscribe bot event, add bot token scopes, install application to workspace. Then invite bot user to Slack channel. And create application and enable socket mode and generate a private token. This is important information. And subscribe bot event and subscribe message channel event. And add bot token scopes and add chat write scope. And install application to workspace. At last, get uh, bot token. Then you can invite bot user to channels. Hmm. The steps are long and complex. Is there a better way? I recommend app manifest. App manifest uh, at the uh, YAML formatted configuration bundle to, for Slack application. We can share and reuse manifest. Example of app manifest, uh, application name and uh, scopes and uh, events and something. Uh, if you have a Slack application, you can get your app manifest in app manifest menu. And create a new application with app manifest, uh, select from an app manifest and create and enter up manifest YAML and check the summary and click create. After install application, application to workspace and generate app token. Mm. App manifest makes the stop steps shorter and reusable. Okay. I recommend app manifest. Now we are ready to start creating an interactive bot. Let's create a bot with Bolto. What is Bolto? Do you know Bolto? No? Uh, Bolto is a Python framework to build Slack application in Flash. Slack also provides Bolt for JavaScript and Java. And inst people install Slack Bolto. And when the Bolt receives a string high, Bolt sends a greeting message. Create Bolt and receive the high and send message. Set two tokens in environment variables, then run app.py. When I, I write a message high on Slack, then uh, bot send hi, I am via, I am via bot. I can interact with the bot. But this is simple enough, so I will exit the bot. App message decorator executes a function when it matches the pattern. The first pattern is high, and the second pattern is cheers. I send hi, bot send, I am via bot. I send cheers, via bot send cheers with via emoji. And that the bot can send mentions. Mention is a get user ID and send at user ID. And bot can handle parameters. We use regular expression in app.message decorator. 
you can extract match to string from context matches. I send uh, choice ramen sushi pizza and bot choose ramen sushi pizza uh, randomly from ramen sushi pizza. Okay. And I sent uh, three teas and five beers and 100 beers and the bottle extract number and beer or tea. And Slack uh, bot is a block it support. We can create a complex message with block it. And Slack bot uh, support logging. If you create a bot, uh, you, use, you can use logging. Okay, and events and scopes. Events and scopes are important concepts in Slack bots. Bot can only receive events in bot events, and bot can only execute API allowed by bot token scopes. For example, the current bot event is message channels for public channels, public channel only. And bot scopes are channels history and chat write only. Uh, view message to public channel and post message only. So the bot cannot read write message on private channel. This is private, not public channel. I invited the bot to a private channel and sent high message, but no response, because bot cannot read a private channel message. What should I do? I want to add events and scopes to write to private channel to my bot. I added a message.groups event to my to application, Slack application. Then a group history scope is automatically added. Then I will reinstall the application because of the change in events and the scopes. I change event and scope, then reinstall. After that, the bot can read write private message, private channel message. I send hi and uh, interact. Uh, skip. Summary of events and the scopes. To receive, if you want to receive new events to bot, and if you want to use new API with new scopes to bot, add events or and or scopes, reinstall application. Okay. From here, I will create functions to solve the issues with various case studies. Calculate a function using SymPy. Motivation. I feel happy to call a calculator application on my smartphone. It seems useful if Slack as a, my calculator. System overview. I send one plus one, both send two. I use SymPy. SymPy is a Python library for symbolic mathematics. And this is calc function. Uh, calc function gets the formula like string and uh, simplify calculate formula. And I, then I get uh, in result in, as an integer or float. So like as a calculator, it's nice. Plus plus using PV or mapper. Uh, motivation. In PyCon GP, I want to make a culture that appreciates each other's stuff. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your kindness. And system overview. I think the Takanori plus plus and thanks and count, count one. PUE is a, a simple OR mapper. And this is a model code of, of PUE. And this is plus plus function using PUE. Uh, get the message, some, some name plus plus and count increment and response. I can appreciate it. Euro Python plus plus and count one, count two. It's nice. Such issues with Jira APIs. Motivation. Jira is very useful. And we use Jira in the PyCon JP uh, task management. And, but Jira web is slow. And such issues without Jira web, I want to, I want to search. System overview, I send some keywords and bought such issues with Jira REST API and send response. And pip install Jira, use uh, Python Jira. 
And this is authentication and create a API token. Jira, Jira, eh, nanda? Jira, Python Jira needs the API token. And such issues, I send some, send, I send message and with keyword and create the search query with JQL. JQL is a J Jira query language. Then, at last, I get such issues without Jira web. I free, I'm free from Jira web. I can check, click this link, and I can open the Jira single issue in web, web page, website. Okay. Create multiple issues from a template. Motivation. Uh, in Python Bootcamp, we held uh, several Python Bootcamp events. And one Python Bootcamp event has uh, 20 plus issues are requir required for each event. And uh, before this bot, copying issues by hand is so painful for me. Jira Web is slow. This is system overview. I send create issues and bot get, uh, bot get issue template from spreadsheets with Sheets API, and then uh, bot create uh, issues with Jira REST API. Create, 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 create. Okay. Google authorization is complex. Please check this slide because uh, my time is not enough. <laughs> this is sample of issue template. Uh, title and delta date and description. And get the spreadsheet data is this code with a Google Sheets API and bot can get spreadsheet data. Then create Jira issues. I can create the issue dict and create issues. Finally, free from copying issues, I send uh, create issues, bot create three issues with issue template. Uh, last, account man management of Google Workspace. Last case study. Uh, PyCon GP Association uses PyCon.jp domain with Google Workspace. I only use Google Admin Web occasionally. I forgot to use Admin Screen. Which? What? Icon? And the system overview. I send user list and create list, and bot create or user get user list. Uh, update Google authorization. Please check this slide. And get user list code is here. Hmm, nice. And add user code is here. And I can create new user with only Slackbot command. I can forget Google, ad Google admin screen. It's nice. But there is a security issue with this code. Uh, it means anyone can list and add a user on Slack. So modify commands to run only for the Slack admin user. This is a sample code of admin or not admin check. Add a user read scope to, uh, to Slack bot and use users.info API and get the user info and users is admin parameter is true or false, false. If, if Takanori, I, I, I am not admin, bot send, we, uh, uh, you are not an admin. Resolve your security issues. Okay, summary of this talk. Uh, simple bot using in incoming webhooks and interactive bot using Bolt for Python and extended extend bot using several libraries and APIs. Next step, let's make your Slack bot and let's connect with library and APIs and automate your boring stuff with Slack bot. Then you will have more free time so you can do other creative things more. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Please let us know what you think. This is translate command by DeepL. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much, Takanori san, for the interesting talk on creating a Slack bot. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, uh, you can come up here uh, to the mic, please. Um, just a quick question. Uh, do you have any experience with threading on, on the bots, like creating threads and talking with the bot on threads? Because regular message can get a bit uh, verbose in some high flow channels. So I'm just curious if uh, there's any support for threading. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, sorry, repeat it, sorry. Ah, ah, Slack, Slack, eh, thank This, uh, this bot is a simp. Uh, so, uh, this, this bot send only the front channel message and can handle thread. And if you want to send the, send to the inside thread, uh, please check the API and thread ts equal thread times stamp, then the, then the Slack, send, Slack send message inside the thread. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for your talk. I'm curious, where do you host your Slack bots? Host it. Yeah. Where do you host them? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This this bot hosts on the, the our AWS EC2 <laughs> instance. But if you interested, Bolt supports the uh, uh, serverless framework. You can try, but I, I've never tried. Okay. Yeah. We might have time for just one more question, um, or else uh, we need to close. OK, then, I think uh, that's it. Um, thank you, everyone. So can we please give another round of applause for Takanori-san? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.